part of the invitation of the gospel today, the prodigal son, we've heard the gospel many, many times, but it is, it really is a call to uh, humility uh, and a call to reconciliation with the Lord. And um, rather than telling stories on front of Peter, I'm going to tell one on myself. Um, when I uh, became a bishop a couple of years ago, I was uh, still trying to figure out what to wear when. And uh, there we wear the zucchetto underneath this particular mitre. And so that's the little beanie that we wear. It's a sign of prayer, a sign of the office of the bishop. Well, you know, I would forget when you put it on, when you take it off. So I celebrate Mass for my family, especially. And I had already given them the signal. I said, tell me when. So I had finished the prayer. I was supposed to take it off. I didn't take it off. So all the rest of the Mass, I'm getting this. <laughs> the whole mess. So it's a, a moments of humility that we have. So Father Peter, as pastor, great humility are you called to. And when you hear his laugh, you know that's a humility moment happening. <laughs> There's a, a true story that. Uh, I ran across uh, in uh, uh, John Powell's book called Happiness is the, an Inside Job. And in the story, uh, he tells of a, a young woman who was a, uh, a God-fearing person, a person of faith, and, and she had prayed and prayed and prayed for the, the husband of her dreams to come to her, the man of her dreams, and he finally did appear. And to her great joy and surprise, he asked her to marry him, and he was wealthy. <laughs> she didn't know that, but she, he was wealthy. So it turned out, though, that after moving to uh, the suburbs in a wonderful home, and she was very, very happy, she started feeling bad. And that was the first time in her life she felt bad like that. And so she found herself um, at the hospital, and they actually diagnosed her as having a uh, terminal cancer. Well, she uh, didn't really know what to do with it. So when she's in the hospital with an IV, uh, trying to figure out what's going on, she discovered that she was super, super angry with God. Super angry. All of us, I think, at one time in our lives or another can relate to that moment when we are saying, God, what? <laughs> what? What does this mean? And she found herself really getting lost in her anger. And she made a decision in her hospital room to journey down to the chapel of the hospital. And she was walking to the chapel and she discovered she was getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And she had to hold on to the walls to get into the chapel. And as she walked into the chapel, she was barely able to make it down the aisle towards the altar. Because for her, this moment was going to be a face-to-face -face fight with God. Because God was not doing what she thought God should be doing. And in her own mind, she said, God, you are a phony, as she was walking down the aisle. And God, you have left me in the lurch, and I am not happy. Uh, and I see right through you. You're supposed to be a God of love. What is this all about? And she got to the right to the front of the altar before she took up the step. And she couldn't go anymore, so she literally fell down on her knees. Then as she fell down on her knees, she saw the prayer that was printed really at the base of the altar. And it said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And when she read that, she just simply said she, let, she let her hair, laid her head on her arms, lying on the floor. And she said, for the first time, I, I, I just got quiet. I realized all of the anger had poured out of me. All of the frustration, all of the guilt, all of the shame, whatever was in my heart was poured out of me. 
And for the first time in my life, she said, I listened. And she said, I heard deep within me, my daughter, all of this is simply an invitation to ask you to turn your life over to me. You've never done that, you know. And the doctors here do their best to treat you, but I alone can cure you. That was what she felt in her heart. And so in the silence and the darkness of the moment, she prayed and laid her life in God's hands and said, I turn it over to you, God. Fill it in the way you wish to fill it. From this hour on, I am yours. She made her way back to her bed at the hospital, went into a deep sleep, and the story has a happy ending, actually. She was cured with the help of the doctors. That really is a prodigal daughter story that goes along with the prodigal son story. And each of us, I think, have had moments in our lives, and we may have a moment even now, where we don't know what the world, what in the world God is doing in our lives. And there's stuff that shakes us to the very core that happens in our lives. And this is really the gospel for each of us. Whether it's a moment of family difficulty, work difficulty, personal difficulty, illness for ourselves or someone in our family. All of it really is moments where we place our lives in God's hands. I thank God we have the sacrament of reconciliation and Father will celebrate that sacrament with you as often as you wish. It's a gift. I celebrate it regularly. <laughs> celebrated last night. Yay. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got to do with an archbishop. Look out. <laughs> uh, God's great love calls out to us in each of the sacraments. So at this baptism font, he will baptize all. He will share the love of Jesus Christ in baptism, healing the original sin and bringing Christ present to whoever is baptized. And for our couples, he'll celebrate the sacrament of marriage and, and celebrate with you God's love that when the rose-colored glasses really do come off, and couples, you know what that means, right? That you're, you have the love of Jesus Christ at the center of your marriages. And of course, with the First Communion, and I just met the First Communion class outside of church, so those super little second graders, well done. We're praying for you. For we receive together at this altar the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It is He who reconciles us to God the Father. It is He who awaits us, like the Father did in the Gospel, to come and put a ring on our finger, new robes upon us, new sandals. That's the love of Jesus Christ we share at this altar, and Father will share that with you as your pastor. <coughs> Final little statement out of the, the poem, The Hound of Heaven. Many of you probably read it. This is God speaking. All of which I took from thee, I did but take not for thy harms, but just that thou might seek it in my arms. All which thy child's mistake fancies as lost, I have stored for you at home. Rise, clasp my hand, 